Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this video, we're going to get into the anatomy and properties of vector objects building a foundation from which we can go into a deeper understanding of working in vector, but we do want to understand the anatomy and the properties of vector objects. There are basically three types of vector objects in Corel Draw. Those are shapes, curves, and text. Each of these object types are edited with easy to use and understand vector elements, those being nodes, line segments, control handles, and glyph nodes, Beyond the basic vector objects, there are tools like the artistic media tools that work based on vector objects. We'll get into those tools later in the training. Having a clear understanding of the basics of vector objects is the foundation of working with vector graphics in Corel Draw. Now we're just going to be working on the fundamentals here and then we're going to start getting into the more advanced things. But we want to go from the foundation up so that through this training you'll be very effective in working with vector. First thing we want to take a look at is vector shape objects, which I have some set up here in this document. Once again, you can download this from advancedtshirts.com to work along with the tutorial. Here we have a rectangle, and our status bar will tell us that rectangle on layer 1. Now we have an ellipse here on layer 1, and this is a perfect shape object on layer one. Now this red node is a glyph node and I have in my options enabled node tracking and if I go with my pick tool right now it's set to the move tool but if I hover over a node my tool will automatically convert to the shape tool. Now that would be in your tools options and we get into this later and we'll come up here to the node and handles enable node tracking is turned on you'll want to enable that while you're working in Corel Draw. I'll select OK. Zoom in and take a better look here and I can take this perfect shape on layer 1 which is actually from the arrows go to the glyph node it'll change the shape to left click hold down and interactively change what's going on with the shape of the arrow or the perfect shape with the glyph node. But you'll notice I don't have any other nodes or anything else that I can really work with. I can go over here to the stretch handle, stretch this out, go back to the glyph node, pull this in and make adjustments. So the shape tools are kind of interactive and dynamic when you're working with vector shapes. Next to the arrow, there is an ellipse, and we can see a node here. I can select that, left click, hold down, start to move that, and now I will change to a pie. Now I'll have two nodes, left click, hold this, and I can make adjustments to that pie shape. Or I can come back and change it back to a regular ellipse or circle. Next, I have the rectangle. I can go to the nodes in the corner, left click, hold down, and around or camphere the corners. And this is set to camphered corners. If I change this to rounded corners, you can see I can affect the roundness of the corners with the rectangle shape. So I can interactively shape the rectangle based on the corners. So that's how the shapes work in their most basic form and we'll get into more later. But they're kind of interactive and you can really dial them in and adjust them based on 
working in the shape mode for that vector shape. Next we have vector curve objects. Curve objects do not have any of the properties that the shape objects have. If I click on a curve, it's going to be just nodes and line segments. To work with it, I can double click on it and change to the shape tool and we'll cover this in more depth later. But you can see if I zoom in here now I have different line segments. This is a line segment and this is a node. So working with curve objects, I can make direct adjustments to the nodes and line segments that I can't make when I'm working with a vector shape. Although the curve objects are not interactive or dynamic like the vector shapes are. I can go to this line segment, select that left click, hold down and pull that out if I want to make the wine glass look a little bit fuller. And then I could bring this segment with this node here, pull it out, make it a little bit longer, adjust the curves in the line segments, and now I've made the glass look fuller. So when I'm working with curve objects, I'm working with line segments and nodes and their states and properties, whereas when I'm working with shape objects, I'm working with the functionality that they're limited to, like the corners on the rectangle object. I'll pull back on my center mouse wheel, zoom out. Let's take a look at the soccer ball. The soccer ball is a curve with 68 nodes on 11 subpaths. The subpaths are the white areas that are actually knocked out and the black shape. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 subpaths. If I look at the lion, I've got 111 nodes on seven subpaths. But you can see that these are very different than working with the shape objects. And we'll get into very in-depth training relating to working with curve objects in future sessions. I'll scroll down here and here we have a vector text object. And since I'm still in the shape tool, I can click on that and you'll see these nodes here. These are the character nodes. They can be selected and I could move the text character. I'll hit Control Z to move that back. I can also change the kerning or the spacing between the letters. Now, we're going to get into text in detail later in the training, but I wanted to cover the basic functions of these vector objects in CorelDRAW so that you would know the differences between them. So these are just the basics. I'm going to zoom out, then I'll zoom in here on some additional text samples I have here. Now if I click here, you'll see with this handle from the shape tool, I can adjust the line spacing. Left click, hold down. Once again, I have the kerning over here. That's the spacing between the characters. I'll have the same thing from the shape tool with the paragraph text. I can adjust the kerning or the space between the characters. I just moved a little there. I can also adjust the line spacing working with the shape tool. So the vector text objects have some interactivity relating to what you'd want to be able to do with text. Different than the shape objects or the curve objects. However, these can be converted to curves as well as the shape objects and be worked with like curve objects, but you can't take curve objects and convert them back to shape objects or text objects. Let's zoom out here and we'll take a look at the vector object properties. And that would be a vector fill and a vector outline. Zoom out just a hair here, Mark. Vector object fills have many different options that we can work with in CorelDRAW or types, from solid color to bitmap objects and even more, and we'll cover that later in our training. Vector object outlines also have many options and properties that can be applied to them, and that'll be covered later in the training also. Now I can see that this is a rectangle on layer one. 
I can convert this to a curved object a couple of different ways. I can go from the menu bar, go to object, come down, convert to curves. I can go from the property bar here, convert to curves. I can go from the right click contextual menu and you can't see that. Let's see here. I'm going to move this down so you can see that. We'll bring this down here for just a minute and we'll move that up. There's convert to curves. I'll hit control Z to move that back. And I can also use control Q as a keyboard shortcut to convert the rectangle to a curve. And I'll do that right now. Control Q. Let me make sure I've got that selected. Control Q. Now you can see it's a curve on layer one. Now it no longer has the properties of the shape object. If I double click, I'll change to my shape tool. I'll zoom in here and we can see now I don't have the rounding of the corners. I'm working directly with the nodes and the line segments. And once again, we'll cover all this in depth later in the training. So I just wanted to lay a foundation in this video for a basic understanding of the anatomy and properties of vector objects working in Corel Draw and some of their differences so that you can be aware of that as we continue in the training. We'll wrap here and we'll continue in our next video training session.